our tech guy is. <laughs> no, we're, we're good. We're good. It's going to be quick. On Zion's glorious summit, our new resource redeemed by blood. sing one more song, 10,000 Reasons. Oh, 
Good morning. Oh, well, yes, we need to dismiss the kids. I totally forgot. Let's have a fellowship, right? That was supposed to be done earlier. That's uh, <laughs> awesome. <yeah. laughs> so I think I just want to double check the phone for the. Um... You can you can have some fellowship, please. Uh... <laughs> right, is that too loud? Did you, did you hear that ping just now? Did you hear that? Oh, too yeah. loud? Uh, Maybe a bit soft. That's for the video. Because remember, okay. we're playing the video later oh, yes. on. So I need to set the sound now. I can always turn it here if it needed to. Okay. Okay. Um, I just looked at YouTube. I'm YouTube. I'm YouTube. <laughs> Okay, I think we're uh, I think we're ready. We can start again. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. You know, telling dad jokes, it's kind of a challenging thing, you know. I wasn't the one that wrote those, but I, I was the one that submitted them for, uh, for for editing. I keep all of my dad jokes in a database. Oh. 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 
Yeah, I need to delete them. Yes. Well, again, it is great to be a father. It's great to celebrate Father's Day. Again, happy Father's Day to everyone out there and, and here this morning. Um, I don't know. You probably heard the saying as it, it, as it says here, like father, like son. Oh, yeah. That's both a scary and a kind of cool thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I remember, remember a time just walking with my dad and just how similarly we walk. Our, our characters and natures. If I had a beard, I'd probably look very much like him. Um, and then you realize some of the traits that he has that, again, are both good and not necessarily good, yeah. but it is a true saying. Right. Uh, genetics certainly have a way of being passed on. Um, we're going to continue our series here, you know, Encounter. And today we're going to talk about obviously our father and how Jesus can teach us about an interaction and having a closer relationship with God. We all want an encounter with God, right? We want a closer relationship yeah. with him. Yeah. No one feels like they have arrived. It's always something in any relationship. You feel like you want to try to grow and change and be different. We want to feel though at times that, that God can be so filled in us that he truly does motivate us from within. Right. We, don't, we don't need the, well, we need them, but we don't depend upon the outward structure, but our relationship with God so fuels us, motivates us, and inspires us to live the lives that God wants us to live. And so that requires some encounters on a continued basis. You know, we talked about this uh, last week and even in our midweek. We realized that being close to God is not easy. You know, like other relationships, we have someone that we can interact with. If I say we can't speak to God, well, you know, some will argue, yes, I can. But we don't have a dialogue that, that we can actually hear him. Maybe if I, I'm quiet, I can. And we're going to talk about some of that over the next few months. How to sit still. How can I listen to God? How can he speak to me? How through his through his word, through his spirit? Can I actually encounter him by by being quiet and kind of shutting down my brain. But it, it is hard to, to encounter God because he, we don't see him. We don't feel him. We, do, we don't kind of have someone to interact with on a continued basis. You know, another reason is even, even our own relationships with our fathers can, can, can shape how we would view God. And some have had close relationships. Some have challenging relationships. Some perhaps do not have a father or have not had a father. And so that shapes us. Even our society today can shape how we can view God. Why? Because we, we don't even live in the same cities sometimes as our, as our parents, as our fathers. We don't live in the same countries. We're, we're a lot more spread out than we used to be. I mean, it, it, for centuries, centuries, thousands of years, you know, you live together as a family. And so you were, you were a close knit. We have, we're distracted by life, which causes distance in our relationships, you know, even within our families. I'm not sure if you remember those of us who are old enough, Cats in the Cradle. Yeah. A Harry Chapin song. When you coming home, son or dad, I don't know when, but we'll have a good time then. You know, we'll have a good time then, dad or son, you know, but so life happens. You know, we have, we intend to, you know, have a close relationship, but it still remains distant. It's true with God. Life happens, right? Yeah. I'll get to you, God, at some point. Father, I want a relationship with you, but my new job's a hassle. And the kids have the flu, but it's sure been nice talking to you, Dad. That, that's almost how we view God. I've just got a lot going on, and I really want to spend some time with you. But we always seem to put it off. You know, when you hear our Father who is in heaven, what do you think? 
our Father who is in heaven. What comes to mind? What perceptions? What feelings? What, what emotions? Our own view even shapes how we think about it during that time. Our Father in heaven shapes what we think. Because where are we? We are here. He is there. <laughs> and so, but he, that even that, there's a distance that we feel, that we understand. You know, one of the ways that we can find connection with God is by looking at Jesus. Thankfully, Jesus says, through me, you can actually see God. You can experience God. In John, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In Hebrews, the sun is the radiance of God's glory, the exact, exact representation of his being. He's the imprint. He's the image. He's the exact reproduction of God. You know, this last uh, few weeks, I've been reading through John chapter 13 through 17. Some of the most intimate times that Jesus has with his closest friends. Some of the most intimate things are said about God, his father. He talks about his father all throughout the, these passages. He calls them his friends, which speaks of the intimacy and connection that he desires these, his, his followers to have. He's trying to get them connected to his father. He's tr trying to get them to understand that I'm going to be gone, but you still can have a relationship with my father. And that would be difficult for a Jew. Why? Because they can't even pronounce the, the name of God. And where is God? He's not in them, as he will talk about in, in John. He's actually at a temple. He's in the temple. And he's not even in the temple where they can go. He, they, he's in a temple in the, the most holy place where only a high priest could go. And that even only once a year. So you can imagine trying to make a connection with Yahweh, Elohim, I mean, all of these words and, and ideas of God. And Jesus is saying he's actually going to be closer than you think. That would be revolutionary to them, mind boggling to them. Yeah. So over three years, Jesus is trying to get them to understand there's a connection between him and the father and following God's will. He refers to him over and over as his father. He's teaching, showing, and modeling, and reflecting on God. And he, they still can't get it. Let's read uh, John chapter 14. I like how Jesus says this right at the very beginning. Because he's, you know, Jesus is so connected with people. He, he understands their, what they're going through. Do not let your hearts be distressed. You believe in God, believe also in me. There are many dwelling places in my father's house. Otherwise, I would have told you, because I'm going, to way, going away to make a ready place for you, and if I go and make a ready place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way where I am going. And Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus replied, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you have known me, you will know my Father too. And from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Still not getting it, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be content. That'll be enough. Right. Jesus replied, have I not been with you so long, and have you not known me, Philip? The person who has seen me has seen the Father. 
How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own initiative, but the Father residing in me performs his miraculous deeds. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. You see the wrestle, right? Yeah. Lord, show us the Father and that'll be enough for us. We'll make the connection where well, they couldn't make the connection because they, they didn't see that Jesus necessarily was that connection between them and the father. You've seen me, you've seen the power father, Jesus's final hours. He wants them to have an encounter. He wants them to, to see that he through him, you can have an encounter with God. He will be, with you and the spirit will be in you like father like son god deeply desires intimacy connection family <laughs> vision glory and encounter that shapes our lives and changes us forever and shapes and changes the the world around us because they see in us someone who is connected and encountering god let's go ahead and pray Father, thank you so much for your vision. Thank you for your love. Thank you that through Jesus, we can see you. Father, so many times we wrestle with trying to have a relationship with you. Father, bless our, our struggle. <laughs> Work through our struggle. Work through our desire to know you more intimately and closely. But Father, certainly help us to see and encounter Jesus. And through him, we can see how you would live and lived in the flesh. And therefore, through Jesus, we can have a connection with you. But as we'll talk about, you did not leave us as, as orphans. You did not abandon us. You've given your spirit in us that also makes a connection with you. So bless our study this morning. Again, like father, like son, help us to see in Jesus so that we can make the connection to be closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, one of the things that we have talked about a lot is, is the fact that we're adopted. We're a part of God's family. In, in John chapter 14, 17, and 18, he says, he talks about the spirit. He says, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. You are my family. I will not abandon you. I will not leave you. I will always be there for you. My father, your father. I, I, I appreciate what Dries said. I mean, God's love, God, he's, he's, it's big enough to be the father of all of us. And that's what Jesus is trying to say. He is, he, he is, I won't abandon you. You are God's children. You are my brothers and you are my sisters. Of course, when we think of orphans, it's, we do think of adoption. We have been adopted. In John 14, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. Jesus gives us adoption papers. It gives us access yep. to God, our Father. Gives you full rights as sons and daughters. All throughout the New Testament, we read that we are children of God over and over and over again. Even, even John says in 1 John, and that is what you are. He wants to make that point very clearly. Oh, I don't feel like it. Okay. But that is what you are. Yeah. Do you know how my week was? That is what you are. Yeah. Parents love. Kid messes up. You still love. Yeah. They perform, make you proud. You love. Real love isn't shaped by performance. And more importantly, as we've talked about grace, God, he wants us to act 
be motivated out of that grace, right. not performance. Yeah, right. That is true love. Amen. He's redeemed us. He's, he's purchased us and he's brought us into his family. We've talked about this over and over again. Not just, yeah. not just redeemed and then set free. Okay, you're purchased from slavery, but no, you're purchased and now you're brought into my family. You are an heir of me, a co-heir of Jesus. And Ephesians, where do we sit? We sit with Christ at the right hand of God, a place of a son and a daughter. That's, that's where we are. There's a lot of research about nature versus nurture. You know, it's interesting. There's lots of studies of adopted children that take on the characteristics of the adopted family. Why? It's, it's, it's nurture. Yeah. The, the environment. Certainly we have our genetics. We have our DNA that shapes kind of things about us. But certainly the, 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 our environment can shape who we are. We are adopted spiritually. We also have spiritual DNA. So we come into God's family with whatever gen spiritual genetics we, we, we have, right? Sinful natures and characters and, and predispositions and, 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 and ways that we have acted for years in our lives that are grooves in our brain that are so hard to get out. That, that is who we are. Yeah. But God says, regardless of your spiritual DNA, you come into my family. I adopt you and I will help shape and change you because of a culture of love, of intimacy and connection. Amen. Now, do I still battle my sinful nature? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. More than I want. But I, God wants us to understand we have come into a, a nurturing and caring family. Families have culture, good and bad. Again, just like, like father, like son, there's good parts of, of, of my dad and there's challenging parts that I have of my dad. Same thing with family. There is a culture in a family. It shapes how we feel, how we experience closeness, connection, warmth, and security. God's family has culture. Even churches have culture. Individual families, as, as, as member, we have a culture. And it's always the challenge to, to change culture based upon how God views that culture needs to be, how family needs to be. And if there's things in our family, Joyce and I talk about it, how in our marriage, how do we change culture or things that have that, that happen? She's patient. Very patient. Very patient. Did I say patient? She's very patient. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very patient. Thank you. <laughs> but he, we have a culture of love and intimacy. John 13. Beginning, it says, Knowing that Jesus was going back, he gets up from the table and wraps a towel around his waist. And it says he now showed them the full extent of his love. He now loved them to the very end. It's a love that was sacrificial. It was a love that was giving. It was so different. It's different than the world. And, and so much so it's even different because he says a new command I give you. Love one another. Uh, there, there's something different about a love that is unconditional that has no strings attached that again is not based upon performance but is sacrificial that not not based upon response not based upon worth whether i consider tim worthy of my servitude i serve regardless of his response i serve that is a love that is new that is not Typical of the world. We measure something 
in, 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 in when it comes to love? Is, is it worth my sacrifice? Are they worthy of my sacrifice? Or they, they're not worthy because they did something to harm me, hurt me. And we wrestle with a love that is truly new and sacrificial the way that Jesus says. It's a new command. It distinguishes God's family from the world. It's so new that the world will know that you're my disciples. Now, now, you just think about that for a second. It's not always what we're known for. We're known for our stances on certain doctrines and we're, we're known for certain things. Are we known for a, being a community, a family that truly, truly loves? Convicting, isn't it? But it's a love that's modeled by Jesus. That he considered others better than himself. That he considered others' needs above himself. He took the very nature, Philippians tells us. The very nature of a servant. Yeah. That idea and concept isn't mean, doesn't mean that he just served. It means he took on the character, the, the whole heart, and, and, and deep down within was deeply motivated to be a servant. It wasn't just he did service. It was who he was inwardly, how he was motivated. He takes a posture of humility. But in God's family, a culture of love and intimacy is not just serving. It's actually being served as well. And this is hard. Yeah. We see the wrestle in Peter. If you remember in John 13, Jesus goes around. And I don't know where Peter stood in kind of the, the, the how many people Jesus had already washed feet. Was, Jesus, was Peter third, fourth, last? But whatever happened, Jesus comes to him and he says, Peter's like, no way. You're not washing my feet. Of course, Jesus goes, unless I wash your feet, you have no part of me. Yeah. Well, come on, bring it on. Just uh, <laughs> let's dump, jump in the pool. I'll be totally clean. No, 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 Peter, you've had a bath. You just, you just, you just got dirty feet. But there is something, I think even that Jesus wants Peter to see that Hey, there's humility in yeah. getting your feet washed. Yeah. Yeah. It's very true. Yeah. And it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to accept help when you're hurting. Yeah. It's hard to be vulnerable to say, I need help. Yeah. I want help. Yeah. I know we feel it. Yeah. I know there's the, the, the wrestle and, and it's right, right or wrong. I say wrong. I mean, when, when you kind of have positions of leadership, you, you, you don't want to show weakness. Why? Why do we do that? Why? why? Weakness is what connects. Weakness is what endears. Weakness is, is what makes us bond together. It's what strengthens family. It's not by being like, I can make it. I can do it. No. Yeah. It's actually saying, I am weak. I need you. You need me. That's what builds love and intimacy. That's what Jesus is trying to communicate in these passages. Intimacy and closeness. I don't call you servants. You're my friends. Everything I learned from my father, I've just passed on. What did I just pass on? I'm a servant. But you're my friends. They share their heart, their feelings. I mean, that's that's what friends do, yeah. right? Friends share what's going on in life. Friends share intimately. They share deeply. If, if, if I don't, I'm, I'm pretty open with things in my mm -hmm. life, but there are, if I, if I get with a friend, I'll share how I'm feeling. Yeah. That's what God wants. He wants that, you know, a big word that we talk about today is authentic. Right. It's a good word. I don't want pretentious relationships. Yeah. I want real, yeah. 
authentic yeah. relationships, ones that, that are honest, that are genuine, that are sincere, that will love me and connect with me even through my gunk and my junk, but will help me. You know, although not directly referred to in the, in the passage, we got lots of gunk and junk. Yeah. And, and what Jesus brings, you know, is, is it Gooby Gone? What's that uh, stuff where you can get the Gooby Gone? I don't know if you know what Gooby Gone is. Anyway, if you have something stuck, like a sticker on something, go buy Gooby Gone and it takes away all the stuff, the gunk. And uh, it's a, anyway, it wasn't in my notes, but uh, I don't know why I thought of it. Jesus is Gooby God. He, he helps clear out the gunk. I don't know if that's sacrilegious or not, but it, it, uh, it works. But and not directly referred to in this passage, but certainly throughout his, he models this idea of Abba Father, our Father. Even I refer to it, our Father who is in heaven, Abba. Jesus changed the vernacular for how to address God. He changed the context with which we can address God. And going back to Teresa's point, it's, it's, not, it's no longer, he is no longer a God of the Jews. Jesus speaks in Aramaic, a common language, a language, almost as if to say, God now is accessible. The Father is accessible to all peoples, all nations, all races, all languages yeah. can now address me as Father. That's the intimacy that God wants. He changes the language so that we can understand that we all can be close to God. And with his love and intimacy comes great vision for family, that we would be united in, for all eternity. I think the older I get, the more I miss and long family. Yeah. I miss, I miss talks with my dad yeah. that I used to have, Come that on. connection. I miss my boys. They live in, I talked about other, other provinces, other countries. It's good to be together as family. God wants us. God has a, God has a great plan for us to spend eternity with him. Kind of the last point that I want to make. He has a vision of home and glory. It was customary in Jesus' day for a father to build an extension to the home. So when the son was getting married, you know, part of the bridal ceremony, he'd go off and he'd go and get his bride and the, the, the place, the room was being prepared and they would come back to the father's house and the room was all being made. So when Jesus talks about the father is preparing a place for you, that is what he is saying. And of course, we read in Revelation 21, this great vision about the, the bridegroom coming at, you know, and, and being united with the groom, Jesus, and being united with God, the father who has prepared a place for us. I will return like a groom and bring you back home. To be with my father. That's the vision. You know, there's, again, you read through John 13 to 17, but there's, going back to intimacy, Jesus says that God wants to make his home with us. John 14, 23. Yeah, yeah. A home needs to be a place of security, peace, safety, lots of food. Lots of conversation. You know, Teresa and Yolanda introduced us to the, the word brai. Now, brai is an Afrikaans term, but it is, it's kind of all-encompassing of the culture. You can correct me if I'm wrong. We experienced several brides during, during the time that they lived with us. 
but it's it's it is cooking over fire and but it's it's much more than than food and 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 barbecue it is the experience of enjoying time together yeah. enjoying food enjoying drink enjoying laughter and in the whole south african culture it's 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 it, it is known to be something that that brings us together as something special you know hanging out in the kitchen what do you call them here in east coast kitchen parties kaylee's that, that that's that was the word i'm looking for but uh I always pronounce it wrong. So I was asking for proper, uh, but that's it. That's, that's the vision that God has. Again, in Revelation 21, we have this beautiful picture of the, dry, the bride dressed to meet the groom. The father's made all of the preparations and it says, now coming down from heaven from God, now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them and God himself will be with them I am making everything new. Beautiful picture. Jesus is so moved in his prayer that his desire for us in chapter 17, verse 24. I want those you have given me, you and I, to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory given me before the creation of the world. That glory is not a self boast. It is beyond something that is beyond description, beyond imagination. So much so in Jesus' prayer, he says, I hope and pray that some day they can see it. And when they do, wow. Wow. He has a deep desire for us to see. It. Right now, our lens is skewed. The glory of God is something we just kind of have to imagine. The glory of Jesus is something we have to have to imagine. Someday we will see face to face. As 1 Corinthians 13 says, now we see but a poor reflection in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now we know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. I'm fully known now by God. Yeah. I just don't fully know him. No. There'll come a time, though, face to face, where we will both experience fully. I mean, that's even overwhelming to think about. Mm -hmm. But that's the beautiful vision that Jesus has for us. What a day that will be. So when Paul prays for his brothers and sisters in Ephesus that we, we talked about this, that this glorious father would give them a wisdom spirit of wisdom and revelation so why that they would know him better that the eyes of their heart would be enlightened god desires the same thing jesus prayed the same thing so on this father's day i pray that we can find connection i pray that we can find an encounter with our father in new and exciting ways a relationship that is transformational, that doesn't need to stay distant, but can be close, intimate, and real. And we can look to Jesus, and we can see God. We can see him as our father, not just his father. We can, in fact, through Jesus, see like father, like son. To realize we're not left alone, that we're adopted, that we can experience love and intimacy. We can have renewed vision of a home and a glory that is far beyond anything we can imagine. And it all will be worth it in the end. Amen. What a beautiful picture. What a beautiful way to celebrate.
Father's Day. Amen. Amen. We're going to uh, transition into communion. I, I think it's a seamless transition in this, in many ways. When you think of, in light of Jesus being the way to the Father, we realize that that came through the cross. That's what we reflect upon in communion. There's something, as I thought about this, that just hit me even more so as I, as I, I, think, I think about God our Father and communion. Even on the cross, Jesus addresses God as his Father several times. But probably, and we probably know this, this verse very, very dearly. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. What grace, what love, what compassion. That in the midst of his pain, who does he think about? He thinks about us. Of all of the reasons that he could have condemned us at this point, he says, please, Father, forgive them. Whether he had in his own mind a vision of, of, a, of a, a reunion someday, I don't know. But the fact is, he wanted our forgiveness. What a beautiful thing. And what a reason to, to celebrate as we take communion this morning. This morning, We can experience his glory. And a desire that, and we'll talk about this a lot too, as we kind of take our journey through the scriptures, but to come full circle. Garden of Eden, a garden of Gethsemane, and a reunion with God that makes it all possible because of the cross. Let's pray together. Father, thank you that you love so deeply. Thank you, Jesus, that even on the cross, you saw us as your children. That you wanted us to be forgiven. You wanted us to have a relationship with you. Thank you. As we're just reminded through this little wafer and this juice, help inspire us. Move us, shape us by this time together to connect with you. Thank you that you love us so deeply. Thank you that you want a reunion. Bless this time together that we spend with you and with one another as family. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Well, that concludes our uh, communion time together. Um, I want to go through a few announcements. We're, we're going to be talking about encounter uh, this coming this summer. Uh, and what does that mean? It's we, I, uh, all of the churches across Canada are going to be going through a devotional series uh, called Encounter. Uh, and it is, it is a 31 day or, or plus uh, experience to try to get closer to God, having an encounter with God. Uh, it is going, you know, 15 days ascending up the mountain, studying the, uh, the, 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 the songs of ascent, the Psalms, uh, you know, that the Jews used to sing on their way to, to worshiping God. Spending some time in a retreat of some sort. And then obviously coming down and how do we live in the world? I want to show a video. Uh, that uh, kind of helps set a uh, little bit of the stage. Hopefully this will work. Awesome, it worked. As you can see, I, we're this devotional book, if you can hand me one of those, or you can see it right there. There you go. Uh, we're going to be uh, asking all of us to go through uh, this devotional book. Like I said, it's 15 days of ascent uh, and then spending some time in, in personal retreat. All of this is very structured um, and there's questions that ask ourselves, there's scriptures that you look at. There's suggestions of how you can have a personal retreat. Joyce and I did that uh, a little bit this week uh, and, and how you can, you know, reflect and, and, and draw closer to God, have specific prayer times, specific things to focus on and meditate, be still. Um, I think it will be really, uh, really great to do this together as community. Yeah. And so we've ordered uh, several books and there, there'll be more that'll be on the way. And these books are five dollars each, uh, and uh, you can order them on Amazon, you know, the Canadian site, or we actually have some here. Want to encourage everyone to get a book, or couples may want to share. Uh, if you if you want, that's that's totally up to you. They don't want to share, they can. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's good too. You can make it personal, however you decide to do it. Um, but. You know, what it's going to require, though, is some some planning and some organization on your part is when you will start what we're asking all of us to do sometime over July and August, or you can start as soon as you want, but to uh, begin to go through the book. And then, of course, after the 15th day, you, you, you plan some sort of retreat. And I realize some people can get away for a day. Some can't get away for a day. Some can get away for a few hours. Maybe, maybe not. I, I want to I wanna make sure you understand that this is not about, again, checking a box. It does you no good to just simply blow through it yeah. for the purpose and say, oh, I, I went through it. Remember the, the purpose, right? Yeah. And this is hard to do. Yeah. I, I've been trained yeah. to go through and... And even the personal retreat, it need, in, in our own minds, you might go, and it needs to be epic. <laughs> <laughs> I need to walk in next Sunday, and there is a glow that, that you just see. And you can't even look at Sean because it's so bright. <laughs> Okay. That may happen. There may be some people next week that, whoa, but maybe not. But 
Let God be God. Let, let him work. Be comfortable to let him work. We're going to talk about a lot of the stuff that can be challenging for us. Because, again, to have a, a mountaintop experience, we, we expect a mountaintop experience. But it, it's simply just to draw closer to God. And I want us to share parts of our, our Sunday services, our midweeks. We an opportunity to share what we're learning, what we're growing, mm -hmm. how we're seeing God, how we're experiencing him. So Joyce has uh, Joyce has some of the books. She also has a kind of a sign up sheet. Uh, we want if, if you can't pay for it today, you know, don't worry about it. I mean, we'll 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 chase you down and get it. To, <laughs> <laughs> if you can't pay for it, don't worry about that. It, it's uh, but again, we want uh, everyone to experience this. Um, that's how you can order it. Any questions at all? You can, uh, no, you, again, it's basically, it's, it's over the summer. That's a great question. Yep. No, that's fine. Yes. And I think the goal is to hopefully, if you're able to bring in the That's correct. Yes. So, in, and that's a great question. So, yes, over the summer is where all of us at some point will have gone through this, this encounter. You will have had your uh, up the mountain, down the mountain, and we'll be sharing with one another. What this is, is it's a kickoff to what is called the thread. You see at the bottom here, the thread is going to be a podcast that is going to be given every week that we can listen to. And, and they'll, you know, if any of you have listened to BAME or things like that, it's, it's, it's a thought provoking. And we're going to take ourselves through the, the Old Testament and journey with Yahweh. How do we connect with, that's the first year, a whole year in the Old Testament. Second year, whole year in Jesus. Third year, whole year by the Holy Spirit. Ooh. Can we do that? A whole year? Yes, we can. Yes, Dorothy. Uh, that's a great question. Not right now. I know there are some that are doing uh, French translation. Um, that's that's the only one that I know of. But okay. So she raised your hand. She'll <laughs> she'll uh, there, there's a way. There's ways to do it. This is this is really just kind of rolled out now. This is literally came come, came off the press. So. It, it, we haven't really had a chance to do multi languages yet, and it, it is it is specifically really also just for the Canadian churches. We're the first ones to kind of experience this and go through this. So uh, we'll try to help make sure the other other languages can do it. I we'll we'll work together somehow. Yep. We don't have enough to give everyone like to, if everyone wanted them today, we wouldn't have enough. So if you have an Amazon account, go. I would say if, if you can order three, and we'll we'll pay you just in case. Uh, uh, but we're we're I think we're getting almost everyone. Uh, yeah, yeah. So any other questions? Awesome. It's going to be a great time. Going to be fun. I think it'll be. Uh, it'll really, you know, help bond us together as community. Yes. Oh yes. So Joel Nagel is the one that put this together. Uh, I didn't show his video, but he he is going to actually provide us with a lot of different resources over the next several months on a weekly basis. He's working full, I mean, he's putting in a lot of work so that we can help experience and encounter God and kind of see our, our place in God's story, the thread that we have all throughout. So, amen? If you have any questions, please uh, come and see me and I'll be glad to help you out. But uh, with that, we are dismissed. Thank you so much. Uh... Oh, sorry, I, I forgot to, uh, there, there is one more announcement. I do have hope here. I forgot to, there you go. Okay, excellent. No, no problem. And uh, you know, as we as we talk about encounter, last, last uh, Saturday, we had a great encounter down at uh, Point Pleasant Park. Look at these beautiful people. Yes. So if you came out or supported us, thank you so much. And, and I did want to say that I am a man of my word that I said, if you fundraise a certain amount of money, 
that you would get something. And so, Dries, this is for you. Oh. Come on, you delete. There we go. I pick. Uh, this is for Nancy. There we go. <laughs> Tina. We we had a donation come in this morning. So Sean. Oh, yes. Yes. And um, where's David? Come on, brother. Okay. All right. Come on. Come on. Go thank you this is how we're you know we appreciate all the support and we are still collecting donations through the end of june and now over to my lovely wife for the next slide which is sunday supper program. The next slide. um all right so in the message today i don't know if you caught the part about sometimes we really need to throw ourselves out there and in humility ask for help okay well somehow it's next weekend we're doing sunday suppers so i'm really throwing you out me, you guys at my mercy to say, please help me <laughs> because I need to come up with 16 pans and my oven and fridge are not big enough to do them all. So if you could come see me and I hope that some people will, will um, uh, I would love to sign you up. So you can come pick up the food on Friday and we will do it next Sunday. As per usual, I don't think there's, if anybody wants more explanation or whatever, come see me too, but and we could really, really use your help yes, if you're yeah, able. Yeah. Thank you. Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Thank you. Well, with that, we are dismissed. Uh, thank you again for joining us at home. Let's have a great week encountering God through Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.